This recording is going to cover specifically the uh, growth hormone, which is a hormone that is secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. Um, as a quick review, is in a previous recordings, it looked at the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. And the pituitary gland produced a whole bunch of different hormones. Growth hormone was one of them. But I do want to kind of just tie in something that um, I had mentioned in a previous recording is about tropic hormones. So remember, tropic hormones target another endocrine gland and control the secretion of a hormone. There were those number of tropic hormones produced by the hypothalamus that targeted the anterior pituitary gland and regulated the secretion of various hormones, growth hormone being one of the hormones being controlled. So, but the, I do want to mention, I'm going to list them real quick for you. The other hormones produced by the anterior pituitary. You had TSH, ACTH, FSH, LH, prolactin, growth hormone, and then uh, we're just going to ignore MSH. So, so remember the mnemonic, all Texans love firearms, pistols, guns, munitions. Well, TSH, I'm going to circle these. I'm going to circle the hormones that are actually also considered to be tropic hormones. TSH, ACTH, LH are actually considered to be um, tropic hormones because they will target another endocrine gland and stimulate the secretion of another hormone. Um, these two are also considered to be um, trophic hormones. So let's just kind of talk about growth hormone. So growth hormone is um, controlled by the secretion of growth hormone releasing hormone. So growth hormone releasing hormone is produced by the hypothalamus. It stimulates the secretion of growth hormone. Remember somatostatin is growth hormone inhibiting hormone that inhibits its secretion. Now let's just look at the, the what growth hormone does. Another term for growth hormone is somatotropin. It has growth effects. And things, some of the effects that it has is mediated by the hormone binding to the receptor and, um, and having um, effects on an organ. But some of its effects are, and I would say those would be direct effects. Um, and they would have effects on metabolism. So you have it binding to this, a growth hormone receptor, which is a plasma membrane receptor and it has effects on metabolism. But some of the effects of growth hormone are indirect, is actually through the production of things called somatomedins, which mediate growth effects. The, so you see here the growth hormone binding to a receptor in the liver. The liver produces this somatomedin called IGF-1. IGF-1 is an example of a somatomedin. It's probably the more important one it's referred to as insulin-like growth factor because it has effects like insulin. And so the somatomedins then have effects on targets and they're more growth promoting effects. And we're gonna go over um, specifically what, what are some of the effects that we have mediated by the somatomedins and the effects directly binding to the growth hormone receptor. But just to show you that some of the effects of growth hormone are mediated by means other than it directly binding to its receptor and having direct effects, is I'm gonna show you here is the pygmies. And these are specific pygmies of the Congo rainforest. Now, if you look at them, the, these are people are of shorter stature. Now, this is just a normal, regular sized male. He's not a giant in any way, shape, or form. These people are of shorter stature. Well, with the pygmies, they produce less somatomedins. Their growth hormone receptor is perfectly normal. Their levels of growth hormone are per perfectly normal. So the, the um, 
the direct actions of growth hormone. The effects on metabolism are perfectly fine is the growth promoting effects mediated by somatomedins is the issue. Now there's not actually a bad thing because they'll be able to survive in the rainforest having the smaller body size actually is an advantage for them. Now so let's just kind of go over kind of some of the effects of growth hormone. So let's look at the indirect actions. So you produce the somatomedins like IGF-1. So growth hormone targets the liver, other tissues, you produce IGF-1, then that goes off and finds its receptor on various targets and has growth promoting effects. So skeletal system, bones, it increases bone growth. Sounds logical, yeah, that would be a growth effect. And it's actually linear growth, getting longer, and the thickness, appositional growth. It affects on things other than bone, so like muscle, it increases protein synthesis. So in this case, it would increase muscle mass. It increases the formation of collagen, which is an important component in bone too. So it increases protein synthesis. So overall, what somedin, somatomedins do, they're growth promoting. They promote, and I'm gonna like list them off for you, linear growth, Increase organ size, increase cell size, increase collagen synthesis. I want you to just think about this. I mean, again, it sounds pretty straightforward. Growth, you think, yeah, someone's going to be taller, they're going to have a little bit more muscle. I want you to think about some of these professional athletes that have been caught taking growth hormone. Why were they doing it? Well, they mainly was they were the ones that are doing it mainly is for the increase in muscle mass. Um, their growth hormone has been given to children that are, are kind of not getting as tall as they should. So some parents opt to give them growth hormone to help stimulate that bo the bone growth. Now also like in an adult where linear bone growth has ceased, they're not gonna get any taller but it could actually increase the oppositional growth, make it a little bit stronger. But again, I'm not an advocate for giving growth hormone to someone who doesn't need it um, because of some of the other effects they could have. Now, growth hormone, it's direct actions, binds to its receptor on the plasma membrane. It's gonna have effects on the cells. And so we're gonna look at its effects on metabolism. So it, for fat, so here's my little picture of adipose tissue. It increases the breakdown of fat, and this is the proper term for fat breakdown, so lipolysis. So it stimulates the degradation of fat because we're actually going to break it down and use the fatty acids for energy and for carbohydrate metabolism. And it's going to involve a lot, pretty much the liver, is it stimulates, when I put the increase, it means increase or it stimulates something called gluco neogenesis. So gluconeogenesis is the formation of glucose from a non-carbohydrate precursor. So it stimulates the production of glucose. But at the same time, in adipose tissue and muscle, it decreases the glucose uptake. Let's talk about that. So this is specifically in adipose tissue and muscle. And the majority of the tissue in our body is adipose tissue and muscle. So we're having a hormone that increases glucose production, but it's decreasing the uptake of that glucose by adipose and muscle. What it's doing is it's allowing that glucose to be used by other organs that have a heavily, heavy demand for it. So it wants to make sure it has plenty of glucose, say for the brain, and um, say red blood cells, because that's all they can use for energy. 
So it's overall what you're looking at is its effects on metabolism is it's trying to have enough energy to use for growth. Now what you'll notice down here is you'll notice that one of the effects, the direct effects, are metabolic. They're antagonistic to insulin. So insulin, when we look, look at the role of insulin, insulin's a hormone that says, hey, I've got plenty of glucose around. I have been fed. Let's use it. Well, here it's like, no, no, no. Uh, we're going to make some glucose. We don't, we want more of it. Um, I, I need some energy. Well, when you look at the the indirect actions of growth hormone being mediated by the somatomedins like IGF-1, they're growth promoting and they're like insulin. Insulin's a very important anabolic hormone. You need it for normal growth. So you have one some actions that are like insulin and some actions are that are kind of dissimilar to insulin. So growth hormone promotes growth. And think about when you need growth, you need energy. So it stimulates the breakdown of fat so it can use those fatty acids for energy. And it promotes producing glucose for certain organs that have a heavy demand for it. But I want you to be aware of that because it decreases the uptake of glucose by adipose and muscle, if you've got too much growth hormone, it could cause your blood sugar levels to be higher and it could kind of mimic a type 1 diabetes mellitus type of condition. Um, and so that's something you have to think about. And that's again one that's actually a reason why I'm not pro people taking growth hormone just because they want to put on muscle. You shouldn't take this unless you absolutely need it because it could have some detrimental effects on your metabolism. So let's now look at the regulation of growth hormone secretion. So growth hormone secretion is controlled hormonally. So you have growth hormone releasing hormone produced by the hypothalamus that stimulates growth hormone secretion. The somatostatin, which is GHIH, inhibits its secretion. And so in growth hormones then either going to target a receptor, have a direct effect, or have indirect effects via somatomedins. But what you'll notice is, you see here, you got increased blood glucose, you got your growth, you got your cartilage growth. It comes back here, what these do is it will inhibit the secretion of those hormones. So it's subject to negative feedback regulation. Once you get the effects that you have, you'll come back and you inhibit the secretion of both growth hormone as well as the regulatory hormones that regulate it. So it's subject to negative feedback inhibition or regulation. So I want to do is I want to look at some things that could affect growth hormone secretion. So you have a table and um, I want you to just look at these right here, how I have this and this. So on the left, these are things that could cause us to produce more growth hormone. On the right, these are things that would inhibit the release of growth hormone. Ultimately, they're all linked to these because it's subject to hormonal regulation. So everything that I have beneath this is going to affect this. Everything here will affect this. Is In order for you to have growth hormone secretion, you need GHRH. So what are some things that would promote more GHRH to be secreted? And then we look at somatostatin. These are things that could cause us to produce more somatostatin, which then would inhibit growth hormone secretion. So let's just think about logically how these things play a role in growth hormone secretion. But before I do that, I want to mention this, this title that you see here. Is we call the regulation of growth hormone, we refer to it as the hypothalamic pituitary axis. Is you have the role of the hypothalamus and the pituitary in the regulation of this hormone. So the hypothalamus would be the GHRH and the somatostat and the pituitary is because where growth hormone is produced. So let's do things that would stimulate it. Exercise. Once you think about it, and this is, this is high intensity exercise. When you exercise, 
Um, you pretty much want to exercise so you can build muscle, um, you know, get strength in your bones if you're doing it resistance training. Um, you need energy. So just think about that when you're doing high intensity exercise. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need some energy. You're going to need to kind of repair yourself after the exercise and help build muscle mass and build bone. So that's how I want you to think about it. Deep sleep. So you got to get into that nice REM sleep. So this is you getting into that deep sleep does a lot of stuff for you. If you don't get into deep sleep, it causes a lot of negative consequences for it. And just believe me, someone who had who has very severe central apnea that I sometimes can't get what before I was treated could not get into deep sleep it affect a lot of body systems and that I have um, cognitive function is affected a number of different things are, are affected but deep sleep that allows you to start producing more growth hormone and that's a way to kind of keep you healthy keep your metabolism healthy kind of maintain muscle mass so just think about exercise and deep sleep these are very important natural means of making sure you produce growth hormone. So instead of going out and paying the thousands of dollars to get someone to give you a growth hormone shot, exercise and get proper sleep. That would help you to maintain growth hormone um, production. The estrogens and testosterone. At puberty, these levels get high. Now once you think about it, puberty, what happens to the kids? You start seeing these big growth spurts. This is needed for that growth spurt. So at puberty, when you have high levels of those, that does help stimulate that growth hormone release. Now, if we look at the other side, um, obesity, um, that does inhibit growth hormone release. Just, I think of it as like, you're like, you're big enough, even though it's not the right type of big that you want. Um, it, it, it actually is, uh, if you're overweight, it does inhibit growth hormone secretion, so it's harder for you to put on muscle mass. Um, as we get older, it just it, this is inevitable. Growth hormone secretion does decrease as we get older. How much it decreases depends on the individual. That's why it's important as we get older, we we keep exercising and we get proper sleep. Now I'm you know I'm guilty of this, so I mean I need, I know better. I just have to exercise more. Um, somatomedins. That would be again your your negative feedback inhibition. You got plenty of somatomedins. We don't need any more growth hormone. Now this other one, exogenous growth hormone. So this is where you're getting growth hormone from the doctor or from someone else where you shouldn't be getting it from, and you're injecting it into yourself. So if you take, and this applies to any hormone, if you take a hormone exogenously, so it means you're not producing it yourself it will inhibit your own natural production of it. Well, obviously, if you don't produce growth hormone, yes, you're gonna to need to take it exogenously. But if you're taking it and you're a, considered to be a normal, healthy individual, what you're gonna do is you're gonna shut down your own production of growth hormone. So what can actually happen is um, if you don't take it, is you're going to be in it we don't know exactly how long depends on the individual before you start producing it again yourself um, so that could this applies to a large number of different hormones so because of feedback inhibition if you're taken exogenously you don't need to produce your own growth hormone so this is the last of the uh, recording about growth hormone we'll have a separate recording um, that looks at the, the posterior pituitary gland and then other recordings will specifically look at um, the various hormones that we talked about with the anterior pituitary.